All right, let's uh, talk a little bit more about this electrical activity that we have around the heart, which leads to cardiac muscle fiber contraction, very similar to what you guys studied when you learned skeletal muscles in biology 201. The electrical activity around the heart is also what you see on an ECG or an EKG, an electrocardiogram, so uh, we'll talk about that as well on the next video lecture. All right, so do you guys remember from an earlier video lecture, we said 1%, I think I'm going to change from green here, back to red, about 1% of your cardiac muscle cells will spontaneously depolarize. So they spontaneously, the voltage across the cell membrane spontaneously depolarizes like that does not need any input from the nervous system to make that happen. So those 1% of the cardiac muscle cells that do that, that spontaneously do that, are part of something called the intrinsic cardiac conduction system. Intrinsic within the heart itself, intrinsic. And uh, so these special cells that do this, they don't actually contract themselves. They're not contracting cells. But when they spontaneously depolarize like this, they have an action potential that spreads across those cells. These cells are connected to other cardiac muscle fibers, which are then connected to other cardiac muscle fibers through those gap junctions, those little pores we were taking a look at that allow ions to flow freely. And ions are responsible for these electrical changes that you see across the cell membranes. So as the cardiac conduction system, as it spontaneously depolarizes, this depolarization very quickly spreads um, across the myocardium um, from one cell to the next, to the next, to the next, essentially instantaneously. So this intrinsic cardiac conduction system is absolutely critical uh, for the electrical activity around the heart that leads to the heart beating. These cells are also called autorhythmic. Auto in biology, a lots, lots of time, lots of times refers to self. They're self rhythmic. They do this automatically, and they do it at a certain pace. So depolarize, repolarize, depolarize, repolarize. They're rhythmic in how this happens. And this is why you have a pretty. Now we know that our heart rate changes. Your heart beats faster. Your heart beats slower. I mean, we'll uh, learn more about why that happens um, later. But um, you know, without any uh, without any control or changes of your heart rhythm due to things like um, I'm going to run or I'm getting stressed out or I'm chilling, you know, those types of things can uh, increase or reduce your heart rate. We will study that later. But separately from that, you know, without those sorts of influences, your heart would just automatically beat over and over again on a certain pace. This diagram from your textbook in, in yellow is highlighting for you uh, the different major features of the intrinsic conduction system. So in yellow, like right there and right there, and then these yellow fibers that you see extending throughout the walls of the heart, those are all features of the intrinsic conduction system. So within those yellow areas, you have these special cardiac muscle cells that don't actually contract, but they're capable of spontaneously generating their own action potentials, which then spread throughout the walls of the heart. And I'm actually going to show you these features, the features that you actually need to know um, on visible body. So I'm going to flip over to that because it's uh, nicer to look at it on a 3D model. All right, we're back on our uh, heart model here. And I'm going to, let's see, let's try fading features of the heart so we can see. I don't know how this is going to work. Let's see. If fading will be enough or not. Probably not. I'm going to have to get rid of the atria and the ventricle so that we can see these different features of the intrinsic conduction system better. But you can kind of see like right in here. You've got some purple shaded structures right in there in the right atrium. Um, those are features of this intrinsic conduction system. And um, I don't think y'all are going to be able to see the ones in the ventricles with, with it 
faded like this. Let me fade this one for a second. Yeah, and kind of over here as well, kind of in light purple right there. And uh, that's part of the intrinsic conduction system. And then these loops that you see right in there in the atrium, those are features of it as well. So just kind of keep that in mind because now I'm going to hide those features. And we will take a look at our cardiac conduction system in a little bit more detail. All right, actually, I found a better view for us here. Uh, on this view from visible body where the ventricles are cut open, this is actually going to be a little bit better for us, I think. And let, me, um, let me start over here with the right atrium. I'm going to hide that for a minute, and we're going to look inside the atrium. So this is all um, area within the atrium. And so in purple, these things that you see highlighted here, these are features of the intrinsic cardiac system and so right up in here that little blue area that you see this is where it all begins in a healthy functioning heart this is the first part of the intrinsic conduction system that generates an action potential and from there it's going to spread to other parts of the uh, intrinsic conduction system go away <laughs> Um, but that's where it starts, and this is called your SA node or your sinoatrial node, so be sure you're following along with uh, the study guide and this terminology. That's where it starts. Okay, and then so the action potential starts there, and then it spreads down that little strip of tissue. That's also part of the intrinsic conduction system, that one as well, and this one, and there's another one over here that... Uh, travels over here into the right atrium. So those are all features of this intrinsic conduction system. So all the cells in those little strips are not contracting, but they're helping to spread the action potential to other parts of the heart. And then that action potential is going to spread off of those little purple strips that you see there and into the myocardium of the left and the right atrium. So over here, the action potential is going to spread from there into the walls of the right atrium over there. All right, uh, let me deselect all of that. So that wave of action potential, electrical activity, eventually leads over here to the AV node. This is the atrioventricular node. You got another little cluster that's located there. And it's actually going to pause there temporarily. You have a little bit of a delay before it spreads onward from there and we're going to talk about why that is uh, later but kind of in a nutshell that pause that takes place here is necessary um, because you want the action potential to spread across the left and the right atrium first so that the left and the right atrium will be stimulated to contract then you want the electrical activity to spread across your ventricles so that your left and your right ventricles will contract second so your heart, we say that the heart beats as one unit, but really the atria contract first and then the ventricles contract um, separately. That's important. You don't want your atria and your ventricles contracting at the same time because if you guys remember, we need blood to flow from the atria down into the ventricles and then from the ventricles up into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta over here. If everybody was contracting at the same time, you would wind up having backflow of some of the blood and the, uh, you would not have that one-way flow of blood through the through the heart. Okay, so um, electrical impulse here gets delayed temporarily and then it spreads into a feature here that's called the AV bundle or the bundle of his or his and that's actually it's kind of hard to see on the diagram but that's extending um, through that wall separation between your left and your right ventricles. So it's down deep inside there. That is called the AV bundle, atrioventricular bundle, or the bundle of his. His, I'm sorry. So let me deselect that. So the action potential is spreading down that way. Um, then it spreads there and there. These are called your bundle branches that are within the intra, um, interventricular septum, that wall between the left side and the right side. 
action potential spreads. All this white stuff you see on here are parts of the intrinsic conduction system. And then from there it spreads here and here highlighted in blue. These are called your Purkinje fibers which are also part of that intrinsic conduction system. And those have like little rootlets that extend off of them and into the walls of the left and the right ventricle itself. Okay, so your flow, just to kind of review, your flow of electrical activity uh, along this intrinsic conduction system starts in the SA, SA node here. Then it's going to spread into these little strips or bundles of intrinsic conduction system tissues. Uh, that leads to the AV node that's right there. You have kind of a uh, or you have a brief pause that takes place. Then the wave of electrical activity passes through the uh, uh, AV bundle or the bundle of his. That leads to the right, uh, left, uh, right and left bundle branches right here and right here. And then that leads to these Purkinje fibers. That's the sequence or the order uh, of a action potential or electrical activity flow through the intrinsic conduction system. And keep in mind, you know, as this electrical wave is passing through these Purkinje fibers, you know, those are cardiac muscle cells. They just don't contract. So they have gap junctions with cardiac muscle cells that do contract that are sitting over here adjacent to them. And then those have gap junctions with the next ones, with the next ones, with the next ones. So action potential spreading through here is very rapidly also spreading across the entire walls of the myocardium um, in the ventricles or the atria if we're taking a look at what's going on up in here. Okay, and then this is a diagram from your textbook which is also showing these car uh, intrinsic conduction system features to you. And also notice here on this diagram you've got uh, Purkinje fiber branches that extend up into the uh, papillary muscles that pull on the cordae tendinii, which pull on the uh, AV valve flaps on each side because you do have contractile muscle tissues in there that have to contract and make those valves close when the ventricles are contracting. Again, that's important to make sure when your ventricles are contracting you don't have wrong way flow of blood from the ventricles back into the atria. So this is another way of looking at these features we've talked about as well. There's your SA node. They're not showing those strips that lead to or bundles that lead to the AV, no, the AV node here, but then that is connected into the AV bundle or the bundle of his, um, his, I'm sorry, and then your bundle branches, and then those lead to the Purkinje fibers that extend throughout the walls of your ventricles on each side. All right, so those, uh, those autorhythmic cells within your um, intrinsic conduction system, um, you know, how do they spontaneously generate these action potentials? Well, what they're doing, all right, so you're, when you studied uh, skeletal muscle fiber contraction back in Biology 201, you learned that your um, motor neurons do this as well. Motor neurons or uh, skeletal muscle fibers are sitting at about minus 70 millivolts along the membrane because the inside's a little more positive than the outside. And uh, when they receive stimulation, you start having depolarization. Eventually they reach threshold, you have an action potential, and then you repolarize. That's what you've learned before. It takes a stimulation to cause that depolarization to start taking place. These cells within the intrinsic uh, conduction system in the heart, you know, they start out about, they start out around minus 60 over here. And then they are just spontaneously, slowly depolarizing all on their own. That's called the pacemaker potential. And that's because they have special sodium channels that spontaneously open and allow sodium ions to leak in. And sodium ions are positively charged. So as those leak in, the voltage across the cell membrane is going to become less negative. So they just spontaneously do that. When they hit about minus 40, 
there are calcium channels that open. Calcium channels are, are calcium ions are also positively charged. So these calcium ions come rushing in to these cells of the intrinsic conduction system and that's when you have depolarization. Okay, and this is an action potential that's occurring. Then they repolarize. So those calcium channels close and potassium channels open, which allows potassium, which is also positively charged, to go out of those cells. And again, this is very similar to what you learned in Biology 201. If you're letting positively charged ions out, what's going to happen to your membrane voltage? It's going to get less negative, less negative. Or, I'm sorry, more negative, more negative, more negative. It's going to go down back towards minus 60 over here. And then the whole thing starts over again. Then those sodium channels open, potassium channels close, and you start depolarizing again. That spontaneous depolarization is called the pacemaker potential. Um, kind of like a pacemaker. That's, uh, you get a pacemaker in, implanted in your heart when your intrinsic conduction system stop, uh, stops working properly. And so you need an, uh, an electrical pacemaker to artificially, on a pace, on a rhythm, stimulate electrically the walls of your heart to contract. All right, so a little bit more about the sequence of excitation, the generation of these electrical signals around the heart. Um, the SA node in a normal healthy heart is where this all starts. So the SA node is often called the pacemaker of the heart. And uh, those spontaneous depolarizations like we were just taking a look at will occur on average 75 times per minute. And then that would lead to the average normal heart rate that we have of 75 beats per minute. And this is sometimes referred to as the sinus rhythm of the heart. If you have a normal functioning heart, um, its beating is going to be controlled by this sinus rhythm. The SA note is the, now we talked about how well all of these cells in the intrinsic conduction system can depolarize on their own. And yes, they do, but different parts depolarize much more slowly than others. So the uh, sinoatrial node, your SA node, does this about 75 times per minute. The AV node that we were taking a look at right there um, at the border between the uh, right atrium and the right ventricle. Um, when you get there, the cells are smaller in diameter. You don't have as many gap junctions between them, and it temporarily slows down the spread of the impulse from one location to another. You have about a 0.1 second delay. And uh, again, that's going to be important because you want this wave of electrical activity to spread across the atria first. Then you have this little short delay, and then it spreads down into the ventricles, and that's enough to allow the atria to contract first, and then your ventricles will contract. All right, the AV node will, on its own, depolarize about 50 times per minute. So let's say your SA node was damaged, and it's not working properly, you know, due to age or cut off of oxygen supply or something like that your uh, AV node can take over and become the pacemaker of the heart, but your heart rate will be slower because it's only going to depolarize about 50 times per minute instead of 75 times per minute. And I, again, keep in mind these um, heart rate uh, values 75 and 50 are averages. You know, they're, they're going to be individual variations um, from person to person. All right, electrical activity spreads from the AV node into the bundle of Hiss. Um, that's your only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. Um, on the heart, all right, so if we think about our four chambers of the heart here, atria up here, ventricles down in here, you may be wondering, well, why doesn't the action potential just spread from the walls of the atria to the walls of the ventricles? And um, that's where that cardiac skeleton comes in. You have some connective tissues 
along the border between the atria and the ventricles that functions as insulation and prevents action potentials from spreading from the myocardium in the atria to the myocardium in the ventricles. And that's also critical to make sure your atria can contract first and then your ventricles can contract. All right, so then that electrical activity spreads into the right and the left bundle branches that we were taking a look at. And from there into the Purkinje fibers, which are more extensive and will carry that electrical signal down to the apex of the heart that will point over here and across the ventricular walls. And yes, these cells can depolarize on their own. The AV bundle and Purkinje fibers can do that on their own. So they can generate their own action potentials, which would then spread across the ventricles. But they only do it 30 times per minute. So if you have a normal functioning heart, the SA node um, takes over. It's the pacemaker because it's depolarizing on average 75 times per minute. And so uh, because it's setting the pace, because it's depolarizing first and spreading the action potentials to the AV node through the AV bundle, Purkinje fibers, etc. If the SA node stops working, then the AV node would take over and it's going to depolarize about 50 times a minute and it's going to spread its waves of depolarization elsewhere. If it's not functioning, then your AV bundle and your Purkinje fibers can still depolarize on their own, but they're only going to do it about 30 times per minute. It's going to be a lot, much, much more, much slower. All right, so when uh, people due to age or blockages in blood vessels and so forth, if you have defects in your intrinsic conduction system, um, that can lead to what are known as arrhythmias, where you have irregular heart rhythms. So you're um, not having this smooth, constant uh, heart rate that's taking place. You can also wind up with uncoordinated atrial and ventricular contractions, which is not a good thing. You need proper, a proper sequence, atria contract first, vent ventricles contract next to make sure you have that one-way blood flow through the heart. And then uh, you've probably heard of this before, fibrillations. Uh, this is where you just are not having nice, smooth, orderly, regular contractions of the heart. Uh, you can have these spontaneous depolarizations that are not following any sort of nice, normal rhythm that, are, that lead to weaker contractions of the heart that occur over and over and over and over and over and over again. Those are called fibrillations. You can have atrial fibrillations. You can also have ventricular fibrillations, which are sometimes called V-fib. And um, when those happen, you're just not generating enough uh, force of contraction to pump blood um, properly. So that can act, those can uh, certainly be fatal when they happen. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, if you have a defective SA node, um, it's no longer setting the pace for heart rate. That can lead to what's called an ectopic focus. That's where some other part of the heart, these um, cells within the intrinsic conduction system, they start setting the pace for the heart instead of the SA node. And um, if the AV node does that, if it's still functioning, the heart will spontaneously beat about 40 to 60 beats per minute. And um, that's when a patient is experiencing that, they're said to be in a junctional rhythm because the AV node is at that junction between the atria and the ventricles, and their heart rate will be slower. If that is um, not functional, that can lead to a partial or a total heart block because you have few or no impulses from the SA node ever making it down into the ventricles. So your SA node might still be healthy and functioning, but if the AV node is not and it's not able to do its action potentials properly it won't be able to spread those properly down through the AV uh, bundle and those bundle branches and on into the Purkinje fibers. So then your ventricles will have to rely on the spontaneous depolarizations that take place within the uh, AV bundle and the bundle branches and the Purkinje fibers which will lead to a much slower contraction 
of those parts of the heart. And as you can imagine, then you're not going to have this nice, smooth, coordinated beating between the atria and the ventricles, and you're going to wind up with heart function problems. All right, so our next uh, video lecture, lecture number nine, we will talk a little bit about electrocardiography, uh, abbreviated as ECG or EKG. I'm sure you've heard of both of those terms before, especially EKG. And... Um, so an electrocardiogram or an ECG or an EKG is actually a measurement of this electrical activity that's taking place around the heart that we've been talking about. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that, discuss that in the ninth lecture for Chapter 18.